So last Tuesday, we had on Santa Clara County Councilman David Cortese to debate the legality of President Trump's executive order concerning sanctuary cities. It was an energetic debate. I'd like you to answer my question, which is a very simple one. There's a precedent being set here by a federal judge that states do not have to comply with federal law and can't be punished for not doing so. That is a major departure from where we've been for my whole lifetime. Do you think that the Obama administration was right to threaten a withholding of federal funds from states that didn't comply with its transgender bathroom laws? That's a uh, orders. That's a really simple question. Uh, I'm telling you that this is the first president of the United States that's threatened with an executive order to withhold, um, in our case, up to $1.7 billion from us. It's unconstitutional for him to try to wield that kind of power. The federal court agreed with us today. Th that's not um, true. So you're never quite sure who's watching when you do a segment like that. But in that case, one person who was was Richard Dreyfus, the Oscar winner from Jaws and scores of other movies. I was actually in bed doing email, and I got one from him. And I thought, that can't really be Richard Dreyfus, but it actually was. He said, I want to come on, and he wrote this, quote, I would be happy to come on your show and explain this rudimentary illustration of the basic checks and balances to you and your audience. That sounded great. We are always happy to promote civic knowledge on this show. We're happy to have Richard Dreyfus with us tonight. Richard Dreyfus, thanks for joining us. How are you doing? So I'm doing great. So I know you spent time um, at Oxford studying this, civics. I know you know a lot about the Constitution. Um, I don't doubt that. I know you're smart. But where in the Constitution does it say states can do whatever they want in contravention of federal law and the rest of us have to be quiet and pay for it anyway? It doesn't say that. It only simply says that the monies attached to things that the executive might want are right. the province of the Congress. And huh. that what was said in the, in the um, judge's ruling was that, that the, the executive didn't have the power to withhold finances because that's the province of the Congress. And that's all I, I wanted to uh, clarify because it's a, it is, as you say, a very rudimentary thing. And we should all know a hell of a lot more than that. And I want to mention, because I know I'm limited to six minutes, I want to mention one thing. The next okay. night you were talking about the speakers on university campuses. Yeah. And I am totally uh, incontrovertibly on your side about this. I think that well, any in intrusion into the freedom of speech is an intrusion into freedom of speech. And when one of the pr presidents of one of the colleges said, this is, an, this is a school, not a battlefield, I said, no, it is a battlefield of ideas, and we must have dissident, dissenting opinions on on campuses, and I think it's uh, political correctness taken to a nightmarish uh, point of view. Well, amen. And I agree with you. And maybe because we're both over 30. Unfortunately, most people under 30 don't seem to agree with us at all. And they believe in something called hate speech, which is somehow banned because uh, they don't know what the Constitution says. But I want to get back to the first point really quick. I mean, this is a legal debate, and this is probably not the best forum for it. But let me just ask you a political question. I know for certain that this kind of thing has been threatened by many presidents before because I've seen it. And, and administrations often get states to do what they want them to do by threatening to withhold money. This happened less than a year ago in May of 2016 when the Obama administration threatened to withhold federal funds from North Carolina over the famous bathroom controversy. I don't remember any federal judge saying, well, you're not allowed to do that. Why? Well, I have to beg off uh, part of this discussion because I have wi withdrawn from partisan politics. I am a constitutionalist who believes that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights must be central and the parties must be peripheral. And well, I think that what's, what's most important for me is what you just mentioned haphazardly. Uh, we're over 30. Civics has not been taught in the American public school system since 1970. And that means that everyone in Congress never studied the Constitution and the Bill of Rights as you and I might have. And that is a critical flaw because it's why we were admired and respected for so long. It gives us our national identity. It tells the world who we are and why we are who we are. And without a frame that gives us the values that stand behind the Bill of Rights, we're just floating in air. And our sectors of society are not connected. Well, and that's, that's exactly why right. teaching civics, and I'm so glad you said that, because what's really important, Tucker, 
is that the assumptions of the left and the right are all skewed wrong. We have to find areas of agreement and areas that we share. And we do share the, the notion that education accomplishes certain things. One, it turns students into citizens. Right. And two, it teaches students how to run the country before it's their turn to run the country. And three, it teaches the values of this nation. People come from all over the world or are born into this nation without the, the, the values that we have here. That's why they came here, to get them. And what are they? You can put them in opportunity, rise by merit, and mobility and freedom. That's what we sell. And if you don't want that, you've chosen the wrong place. And you don't get a pass by being born here. You have to learn it. Even the Ten Commandments are not known at birth. You must learn them. And we must learn our values. And if we don't, we are fatally, fatally wounding ourselves. We will not have any way to really combat the ideas behind ISIS because we won't know our own. And we have to. So I... You know, typically I interrupt our guests and I expected to debate you, but that was, uh, I agree with every single word of that. And I just want to say thank you very much for coming, for emailing me uh, late night and for coming on to say that because I think it's important. And can I hope I, that people watch Can this. I give you one idea? Can I give you one idea? Give me one quick idea. for everybody. Okay. Everyone knows the preamble to the Constitution or should. And the preamble is meant, is in fact the mandate of the, con of the, of America. And I say, if every parent and teacher and school superintendent and public political commentator signed the preamble as a gesture of support for the demand to bring civics back to the grades below high school graduation, I'll call a civic strike. And we will get the attention of all the people that deserve to pay attention. That is a great we'll point. And we'll get it back. If you do that, I hope you'll come on to tell us how you're spreading that idea. I'm doing it. People, people can go to my website, which is thedreyfusinitiative.org, huh. and it's on the website. Sign the preamble. Done. Richard Dreyfus, thanks for thanks. coming on tonight.